Okay, YouTubers, I have uh, cheated you out a little bit of action, but I'm just trying to get something done on this 4.8 build. Um, I went ahead and sealed up my plugs for my knock sensors. Uh, ran by O'Reilly's because I had previously ordered some new gaskets for my coolant transfer tubing. So I put all four new gaskets on there. Uh, hint, I don't know if everyone knows this, when you replace those gaskets on your coolant transfer tubing, you put the gasket on the tubing and then you install it as an assembly. And you also want to go under this harness for your knock sensors. So in the future, if you ever have to service this and pull these out, you're not fighting with this tubing or having to remove it to change a knock sensor. So. Just keep that in mind whenever you're assembling. I just want everyone to see that, you know, there's nothing wrong with sealing those with silicone, RTV, whatever you have available. And uh, that way it'll kind of eliminate a great, great portion, if not completely eliminate, getting water down. Your information, the bolts that do your coolant bypass, these bolts torque to 106 inch pounds. Okay guys, these are the push rods I'm running in the Turbo 4.8 build. 7.4 inch, 80 thousandths thick wall, one piece push rods. I'm gonna have to check the push rod length and hopefully these are the right if length. not, I don't know if they'll let me exchange them for a little bit shorter, who knows. But these are fairly expensive to replace so I'm kind of crossing my fingers that that 7.4 will still work with the changes I've made as far as, you know, surfacing the head 30 thousandths, uh, going to the aftermarket camshaft, the different, you know, non-factory lifters. That's why we have to check it, guys. Okay guys, I uh, set the rail that's loaded with the rock arms and the bolts. I set it down in the head on, you know, located. It's gonna be self-explanatory. There are assembly manuals that recommend that you put assembly lube or some kind of a lubricant in on the underside of your rocker arm where the push rod interfaces the push rod cup. And you'll also see I'm recommending putting just a little dollop of assembly lube on the tips of all your valves. There's absolutely nothing wrong with adding just a little bit of lubricant. Me, I will probably take my little bottle of STP and squirt a little across where the push rods interface, squirt a little bit inside all my trunnions and squirt some on the, on the spring. What I'm gonna do now is just kind of run these down by hand because I wanna make sure they're started and there's no burrs or anything weird going on because you absolutely do not want to strip one of these rocker arm bolts at this stage of assembly. Let me get that all done and then we'll try to find zero lash on our number one cylinder, which the piston's up at top dead center, so I'm gonna verify that both those valves are closed. The goal is to get 60 to 80 thousandths lifter preload. An M8 bolt with a 1.25 thread, 0.0492 per revolution of that bolt. What I found from a reputable engine builder, you should shoot for one and a quarter to one and a half turns past a true zero lash. One and a quarter turns is going to be about 61 thousandths and a half turns is a little over, I want to say like, 70 something, a little over 70,000. 7.400, 80 thousandths wall. I'll put them on this number one cylinder. What you'll do is you'll just grab these. Normally you'll have push rods and all these holes and you'll have to kind of fight with them to get them where you want them. Okay, hopefully you guys will be able to see what I'm gonna do right here and right now. Basically I'm working on the number one cylinder and we're going to do one at a time. You use EOIC. 
E-O-I-C. When your exhaust valve just starts to open, you can adjust your intake. But when your intake valve just starts to close, intake valve closing, you can adjust this. Push rod is coming up. It's opening the valve, right? So we want to get this push rod to the maximum distance up and just as it starts to close or go back down we can check this push rod length just started to go back down so now this intake valve starting to close this valve is on the back side or the heel of the load Put your rock arm on here get it started here's where you're gonna have to use a little bit of finesse grab that push rod on either side and spin it Tighten this rocker just a hair. It's still spinning. Tighten it a hair. I cannot turn that push rod by pushing it or trying to spin it with my fingertips. Zero lash. Wiggle everything. Make sure you don't have anything binding. Recheck your push rod. Can you spin it? Is zero lash. I've got my torque wrench here. Set at 22 foot pounds. We're gonna hope that we can get two R22 foot pounds of torque within one, one and a quarter to one and a half turns. So here we go. There's a half a turn. There's a full turn. Okay. There is one and a quarter. That is one and a half turns. Okay. Just shy of one and three quarter turns. We're doing the EOIC method for checking the backside or the lobe of these uh, lifters. So if, we're, if we did intake starting to close to check this one, this just started to come up, which indicates that we've started out to open our exhaust valve. That means our intake push rod and lifter is on the backside or heel of the cam. We're going to repeat the same process we just went through. We're going to throw our rock arm on here with our thumb drive because it gives us a lot more sensitivity. Rotate this push rod with our fingertips. We are at zero lash. Again, same second verse, same as the first. We gotta start here and find out how many turns. There's a half. That's a whole turn. And one and a quarter on that. I'm getting one and a quarter turns on this intake rocker, which is dead nuts where I want to be, but why is this one coming out with too many turns? That one exhaust valve that needed a 30,000 shim to set up my 1-800 installed height for my valve spring, that extra height on this valve stem is why this one rock notice that before because normally they're going to be fairly close to each other as far as how many turns you need to get to zero or from zero lash to your preload and get your torque spec okay guys just to show you to verify that the issue with this exhaust rocker was because of that one 30,000 shim this one set up on the back side of the lobe at zero lash so we will see what a regular installed height rocker has okay ready so there's one full turn just a hair over 
one and a quarter turns. It wasn't near enough to even say, I don't know, it wasn't even halfway between a quarter and a half, but it was just a hair more. Good to go. The only uh, rocker arm or cylinder or valve, the only one I'm gonna have to get a shorter length push rod for, that one. That is all because of that stupid valve stem that was sticking up farther than all the other ones on these heads requiring that 30,000 shim, the right length push rod to get the right preload to be in the same ballpark as all the other valves on the engine. And then everything should be good to go. So see, it's all in the details. You gotta do what you gotta do, even if you don't feel like it. Get out there and work on your stuff. Check and verify everything. And that way, when you get this thing in the car and go to fire it, you're going to get what you expect and not get your heart broken. Figured out what I need to do to finish assembling this engine so that I can get the stupid thing back in the S10 Blazer. Anyway, pretty excited about my finding and my revelation of memory. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this is, helps you. Go through the process of getting your uh, lifter on the backside or the heel of your lobe and how to properly check your push rod length in terms of lifter preload. Thank you again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Check out all those other videos I have because you might find something that interests you.